Well, welcome to this week's edition of the City Update. I'm your host, Mark Aaron, Multimedia Design Manager for the City of Danville. Today, we're out at the Blue Nature Center. Joining me today is Karen Cross, who is our Outdoor Recreation Division Director for Parks and Recreation here in the City of Danville. And Karen, unfortunately, I think fortunately probably in her eyes, will be retiring from the City of Danville with 34 years of service here in just the next couple of days as of this taping. And, and Karen has really been instrumental in a lot of the outdoor activities being formed here in the city of Danville, and especially the Riverwalk Trail. And uh, on today's show, we're gonna take a trip back through memory lane on um, her years uh, here within Parks and Recreation, how she got started in Parks and Rec, and, and lead us up to where we are today with the beautiful Riverwalk Trail, the many outdoor activities that we have uh, here in the city of Danville. A lot of that is attributed to, to Karen's hard work and diligent o diligence over the years to make those things happen. So Karen, first, I guess, congratulations um, on the retirement. We hate to see you go, I know, but uh, it's gonna be a well-deserved retirement. And uh, we wanted to have you on this week's show just to, just to reminisce a little bit because I know uh, my family enjoys the Riverwalk Trail so much and I know a lot of our citizens do and I know that's one thing you're very proud of uh, when it comes to outdoor recreation here in the city but let's talk a little bit about uh, starting back day one I know you didn't start within outdoor recreation but you did begin your career in parks and recreation within the department so tell me why you decided to, to make a career out of uh, being involved in parks and recreation um, well, I guess when I was in college, I selected that as my degree program because I really enjoy administrative things and I really enjoy recreation and outdoors. So it was kind of a split between being a PE teacher and an English teacher yeah. that seemed to join those two things together. Yeah, yeah. And I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Had no idea what an adventure it would be. Yeah, I was going to say, as you look back, did you ever think you'd be sitting in this chair celebrating 34 years of service within the department? No, I came to Danville. I was going to stay one year and then that? move on to other things. Yeah, wow. I sure was. Okay, great. Well, now, take us back. Uh, you began your career at uh, Squire Recreation Center, right? Right. I was assistant center director there. At that okay. time, they had two, two full-time positions at each recreation center. Okay, very good. So what were your job duties uh, during your time there at Squire's? Well, um, I was assistant director for the first month, and they had the position opening, so I got oh, promoted great. to director. Yeah. Um, with that, it was planning all the recreation programs at Squire Armory. At that time, it was one of the largest centers in Danville, and then in the summer, we had that playground program that you'll still hear people talking about. It was a parks and recreation program for years yeah. where there were 20 playgrounds that were open throughout the community, and yeah. the center director at Squire was responsible for 10, and the center director, I believe, at Green Street was responsible for those other 10. Great. Very good. So you stayed at uh, Squire for how long? Um, about a year and a half or two years. Okay. And then did you make your way over to outdoor recreation, or was there another stop before you uh, came to the outdoor uh, recreation division? Well, I moved from Squire to the Playground Centers and Youth Coordinator position. Okay. That's kind of like today's community rec. Okay. We right. had um, five recreation centers and we had five youth councils. Oh, wow. So that was a lot of fun, but it kind of removed you from the participants so much. It was more administrative yeah. and supervising staff. Okay. So then you stayed in that position uh, for how long? And then uh, I guess the next stop was here at Outdoor Rec, right? Yes. Um, I was there, I don't know, about two and a half years or so. And okay. the position came up at the outdoor rec and they couldn't fill it. They kept trying to find a division director for that. And so finally I spoke to John Gilstrap and Tish Lindsay. I said, how about if I apply for a transfer? And they were like, no, we don't think you'd really like outdoor. And I was like, oh, I think I would. Wow, great. <laughs> and um, anyway, so they gave me that opportunity yeah. and I have really loved it. That's great. Well, you said you had only planned to stay one year. So take us through your thought process as you uh, stayed in those positions for a couple of years and then got promoted to the director position there at Squire and then also heading into outdoor recreation. What was your thought process as you really uh, embarked on your career within outdoor recreation? Well, um, I think initially Danville was just different. I was from Georgia. I thought Danville was near Washington, D.C. Oh, and okay. So <laughs> it's nearer than Georgia. Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, so I thought the department was absolutely incredible. I was really impressed with the department and still yeah. am. Um, but there were I didn't have there were no trails here and I was used to hiking we had all these accesses to the Appalachian Trail from my home and I was yeah. used to that and doing a lot of outdoor activities 
But when I had the opportunity to work in outdoor recreation, it led to first participating and leading a lot of those activities and then eventually to being able to work on trails. That so it was just wonderful. Yeah, so can you remember the day or the year that uh, you started in outdoor recreation? I don't remember the day, but I do remember that it was all um, contingent upon me getting a lot of training. So I went to okay. rock climbing school. I had to get my WSI. I was working about 60 hours a week. And uh, I do remember sitting on the edge of the pool with the instructor that was teaching WSI, and she was really um, tough. And I was sitting there crying, going, I just can't do this. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, you get through everything, yeah. and then it was, it was just loads of fun. So great. Well, now let's talk about uh, some of the initiatives uh, that you've instituted within outdoor recreation since you've been here. I know there's a laundry list. Uh, so let's take, take us back to maybe the first five years or so. What were some of your goals as you initially started and embarked on your journey within outdoor recreation? Well, to convince John and Tish to allow me to have the position, I had to come up with a list of new programs. So my first few years, it was trying to implement some new programs and keeping a lot of the old ones. Like they mm -hmm. already had things like Sunset Canoe, and those have been popular all the way through. I think yeah. they've been doing those since the 70s. Well, I don't I didn't know. But that. Okay. yeah, so there were a lot of great programs that we kept, and then we tried to add some new ones too. So I'd say those first five years were mostly program development and getting okay. to know the people that were involved. And there were some fantastic people. There was a very active canoe club at that time. Hmm. We later formed a very active hiking club. So there was a lot of citizen involvement. And I just really enjoy getting to know yeah. the folks that were interested in those types right. of activities. And I guess it was a real plus to have the river right in your backyard, literally, <laughs> uh, to take part and, and, and really tailor programs around, right? It was, but you know, Mark, things have really transitioned with that. When I initially started in outdoor recreation, we did our trainings on the river, but almost all of our trips were to other places like mm. maybe the New River, the James River, the Mari River. People yeah. did a lot more of the whitewater canoeing. And one of the differences was that people would come to us for training and they would pretty much go paddling with us or with the canoe club. Well, now we use the Dan River so much more. And the thing that we've seen is that, that is a little different is folks will come to learn all the basics of paddling. Then they go out and they can buy kayaks yeah. and canoes and they use them here on the Dan. So there's a lot more local use of paddling now than there was at that time. And do you think, uh, we're going to talk a lot about the Riverwalk Trail in today's show, so I don't want to jump ahead to that uh, yet, but do you think the opening up uh, of having the trail and the access, the close access to the river, do you think that really allowed citizens to see how they can utilize the river, they can play in the river, you know, they can do a lot of things in the river uh, with having that trail. It's really right there at your fingertips. Do you think that kind of the opening up and the access of the banks of the river for miles really played a role in that? Probably so because it made it so much more accessible and yeah. friendly and made the river seem like a part of the community right. instead of just, you know, as a separate thing that mm -hmm. separated the two sides. Yeah. So I think so. I yeah. think before um, it was used primarily from what we now call a brew Grogan Park and right. just that little area there and not so much downstream and folks have now seen they can utilize all the river. Yeah, that's great. We're going to talk a lot about that in the second half of the show when it comes to the Riverwalk Trail and really one of the, the brains behind uh, that trail and, and the success of it here in the community. So I want to definitely touch on a lot of that in the second half of the show. So uh, the first five years, is there really, is there one thing or one person or one program that stands out in those early years that really uh, helped you along the way or made you think, hey, um, I could do this for another uh, 25 years. <laughs> well, we had some really technically adept people, and I had learned all the basics that I needed to know for uh, to be an instructor. But um, Dave Odner was one individual who was very active in the canoe club, mm -hmm. and he was kind of a free spirit, an excellent paddler, got so many people interested in paddling. One of the only people I knew that could practically roll his canoe and open a wow. boat. And um, he was so um, such an interesting personality that a lot of people came for paddling because of him. He would often be one of our instructors. And then um, as hiking began to become popular, Betty Jo Call okay. started out hiking with us and then became an instructor and really enjoyed that. She would research places and, and the environment around that. She made hikes very interesting. 
So that developed into us doing, we went from doing one hiking trip a month to two, to having a hiking club that was also doing a couple of trips a month. Yeah. So that was a very big part of those, th those earlier years. Yeah, that's great. Now, let's talk a little bit about the, the different parks that we, you mentioned a Brew Grogan, and a lot of people access the river from that park in the early days. Of course, Blue Park has been here for years, and we've had Festival in the Park for 40 years, but uh, were there other parks that maybe were opened up? Like, I know Anglers Park, uh, was that utilized a lot back then when you first started within outdoor recreation, or is that just something in the last decade or so that's really become being, being utilized? I don't even recall what that was called when I first came, but there was yeah. some little place you had to go below the water treatment plant <laughs> and unlock the gate in March and lock it back in June so people could strike bass fish. And that? it was this little dirt road and I was kind of scared to go down there. Wow. <laughs> so that's what we now know as Anglers Park. That is amazing. Is there any other things like that that has really, I guess, grown over the years that you look back on now and say, wow, I can't believe that this used to be a little dirt road to, to seeing what it is today? Well, you know, Dan Daniel Park wasn't there. It was, um, that was built in 1993 and opened in 93. Um, prior to that, that would be something that you'd hear about. There's this place on the prison farm that people in the know go to fish, but you can only get in if you know where to climb under the fence. That would be what I would hear. And yeah. then, of course, later on, that became Dan Daniel Park. So there have been a lot of properties that have been opened up to public use. Yeah. That is great, and, and to think that's where my, my son plays Little League Baseball now, and my daughter plays T-ball. You never would have thought, I guess, back then, you know, 25 years ago, it would become what it is today and have a minor league baseball team that plays their games during the summer right there in that park. Exactly. If you're under 20, then you've no, no life without Dan right. Daniel Park. You're exactly right. Exactly right. Well, that is cool. Yeah, because I was thinking all of our Little League games were played at Hilton Field, Woodbury, all sporadic, you know, throughout the city. You didn't have that one central location to play your, your baseball games, so very neat. Um, so as uh, we've gone through the first five years or so, so now as we've got, I guess you've established some of your programs, you're working your contacts, uh, take us through the next five to ten years uh, within outdoor recreation. Were you the division director at that time or was that position, had it been created? Tell us a little bit about uh, where you were on, on the ladder of becoming the director at that point in your career. It was the same position. We've okay. been called a lot of different yeah. things over the right, years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're always changing from a bureau to a division yeah. to whatever, but it's basically the same position. Okay. Um, what happened after that was um, I got a little bit bored with yeah. just the programming. And I don't know if this was a good thing or a bad thing, but I remember asking John one time, I said, hey, there's this grant. Could I apply for a grant? And he was like, sure. You know, John and Tish were the type that they would say, they told you in your interview, we're going to give you the ball and we expect you to run with it. And yeah. they literally did that. And pretty much right. anything you wanted to try, you were welcome to try. And if you fell, they didn't, you know, really beat you up about right. that. They yeah. kind of dusted you off and said, well, try something else That's then. Great. And so they let me do that. And that was just a small grant. And it was, um, I think, for putting, placing some trees in Blue Park. We did some replacement trees. And I think part of that are these trees that are around the fountain today. Right. And um, so that was my first attempt at writing a grant, which always seemed so scary. And yeah. it wasn't quite so bad. Right. So later on, that led to working on the grants for the Riverwalk. Yeah. That's great. Well, uh, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back from break, as Karen mentioned, the Riverwalk Trail and, and writing grants for that, we're going we're gonna to take a trip back down memory lane to day one of the Riverwalk Trail. And I, I think it began with the little concrete loop there at Dan Daniel Park. Was that the original Riverwalk Trail? It was. That okay. was built with Dan Daniel Park, probably completed yeah. about 1994. 94. So we'll, we'll, we'll take you from that little concrete trail at Dan Daniel Park to the Riverwalk Trail that we have today. And Karen played an integral part in every step of that process. And we're going to hate to see her leave, but I guess you really have seen the completion of the entire loop of the trail, right? It's almost complete. Almost. <laughs> almost. Almost. But I'm sure she'll be checking back in and they'll be using her knowledge when it comes to grant writing and things of that nature for many years to come to, to complete that loop. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back from break, we'll spend more time with Karen Cross as she retires from the Parks and Recreation Outdoor Recreation Division with here in the city of Danville, uh, celebrating 34 years of service here with the city. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Ballerina. <laughs> Sometimes all it takes to be a dad 
is remembering how to be a kid again. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. Well, welcome back to this week's edition of the City Update. I'm your host, Mark Aaron, Multimedia Design Manager for the City of Danville. My guest this week is Karen Cross, who is our Outdoor Recreation Division Director here within the City of Danville, within our Parks and Recreation Department. And Karen is going to be retiring in, in just two days as of this taping, uh, and she will be ha uh, celebrating 34 years of service within uh, the Parks and Recreation Department here in the City of Danville. In the first half of the show, we talked with Karen about uh, the first decade or so with the department and some some of the things that she went through and getting new programs um, off the ground within the department, some of the changes she has seen over the years just when it comes to a uh, Brew Grogan Park, uh, Dan Daniel Park, which wasn't even in existence when she started with the department, and also um, uh, English Park as well. She talked about being a little dirt road there leading down to the park past the water treatment plant. And of course, what you see today with rugby fields and anglers mountain uh, mountain bike trails and things of that nature there. But uh, Karen, I guess uh, the thing you're probably the most proud of, I would think, is the Riverwalk Trail and the success of the trail and the thousands of people that utilize it on a daily basis here in the city of Danville. And we kind of teased a little bit before we uh, left for break about the, the initial trail being that little uh, concrete trail that's in Dan Daniel Park, a little loop there. Um, and that was built uh, in, what, 1993, did you say? I think 1994, right 94. after Dan Daniel opened. Okay. Uh -huh. So tell me a little bit about how you got involved um, in the Riverwalk Trail process, writing grants, and, and to where we are today. How did you initially get involved in that process? Well, just prior to constructing that trail, we had had um, an initiative where we wanted to build trails in neighborhoods. So we approached a couple of neighborhoods, and at first people were responsive and then got a little bit fearful about folks that weren't in their neighborhood coming using the trail and how that mm. would affect their property, and we're just uncertain about that. Yeah. So we took a step back and decided, well, we need to do this on public property first to kind of test it and see how it works. Yeah. Um, so the first was that concrete loop, and that was actually sponsored by Danville Register and B. Um, there were several different names tossed out there, and the Riverwalk was selected. Right. So that was the name of that original concrete loop, and then eventually became the name of the whole trail system. Yeah. Um, so that was done, and then a few years later, some grants were applied for both by us at Parks and Recreation and by Community Development mm -hmm. with the idea of extending down towards what is now known as Anglers Park and then upstream and across the bridge to the crossing at the Dan. All and right. the crossing was just being built at that time. Yeah. They were renovating all those buildings and all, and that was a community development project using transportation funds from VDOT. Right. So um, Sharon Carney and Ken Gilley worked on it from that end, and I worked on it for Parks and Recreation from the other end, and we actually had two grants from two different agencies at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we opened the trail from Dan Daniel down towards Anglers, and that was about a mile. Um, we opened that in 1999. That was Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation funds, what okay. they now call the Recreation Trails Program. Mm -hmm. Then in 2000, the section upstream was opened that connected the crossing. Right. Well, we were really shocked, surprised, and amazed at the amount of use that trail started getting. Yeah. It was just like people immediately adopted it. We didn't promote it. We didn't do anything. It was just kind of like, hey, I'm really fortunate to be a part of this, but I can't right. really take much credit. Yeah, like so, they've been waiting for years for it. Huh? Yeah, How yeah, the that? community just embraced it. So it has really been a win-win project ever since. And one thing I just want to make really clear, I was privileged to be part of a team to do this. Yeah. It hasn't been me. A lot of times I end up in front of the camera, but there are so many people involved, you know, from the very beginning, community development, parks and recreation, and public works right. have um, just partnered together to make this happen. And we've had fabulous support from several, I think three city administrations have been yeah. involved in the process. So, you know, it's just been, it's really been a team effort all the way around. I know it has, and uh, Karen is very humble, but she has played a big role in that. And, but it is a team effort to make a lot of this happen. And, Walk us through that process because it's not just uh, say, okay, we want to put a mile of trail through here. Let, let's do it. it. It's it's a it's a process, and, and there's a lot of things that have to uh, be put into place to make it happen. Easements have to be gathered from at certain portions on the trail. Can you give our viewers an understanding of really what it takes to to get the funding first of all, and then to really uh, follow it through to completion for just maybe a mile stretch of trail? Sure. Well, when we were doing it all on city-owned property, it was a little bit easier because we had control of the property and we're managing that. So that was 
of course we gave ourselves permission to do it yeah. <laughs> and um, so you didn't have to go through anything else with that but there are grant application processes and a lot of people think that's really complicated there are there is a lot of detail required and a lot of research required to write a grant but as long as you answer the questions the way they're asked and find out what the intent of the grant is and make sure that you're matching what they want to do then it's pretty simple process it just takes dedicating right. some time to it right. so that might be one thing with my position it changed started to change a, a lot hmm. over the years yeah. where I was doing half programming half grant writing until more recently it's been heavily involved with grant writing and yeah. projects and that type of thing right. so it's kept it very interesting yeah very good well um, I know we've talked about this a lot on our shows uh, in the past when it comes to the the uh, grant writing and receiving funds from the state level that uh, the state people and they know now that we're going to utilize the funds that we're giving and there's actually localities out there if those funds aren't utilized they'll give us a call and say hey Dan well can you utilize this fund because they just of our, I guess our past work on the trail they know that we're going to put the funds to good use right that's true um, yeah. occasionally a locality or some entity will have difficulty completing their project yeah. so there's money left over and we have been really fortunate to get the call sometimes saying do you need extra money for your project and so if we do the state have been tremendous partners in yeah. you know providing that extra money to help us either go further or do a little bit more with that grant or reduce the amount that the city has to contribute yeah. So uh, we talked about the growth of the trail down to Anglers connecting to the crossing. So now we're into the 2000s and the, and the trail continues to grow. So tell me a little bit about the next process. Where did we go from there? And then now currently how many miles of trail do we have along the river wall? Well, currently it depends on if you count every spur, right. but um, anywhere between 9 and 9.5 miles, right. depending on how you want to measure yeah. it. Um, so the way the process went from that point was now we were dependent upon the business owners and private owners to buy into the whole idea. Yeah. Well, once the trail had been here a few years and we weren't experiencing the problems that people were afraid might occur, you know, less crime on the trail pretty much than anywhere. Yeah. Um, we weren't having people go over the fence at Public Works and steal things. Yeah, so right. yeah, everybody was utilizing it the way it was meant to be used. So once the trail was built out on public property, as you mentioned, we, we allowed ourselves to do that here in the city, but uh, you had to go to on private property. So that created a whole different animal, and you working with private business owners in the community, right, for easements that, to uh, allow the trail to continue to grow. Yeah, and those first people that granted us easements, they were really brave, but yeah. they saw that we didn't have problems on the other sections of the trail. So a lot of them were willing to give us the easements that may have been anywhere from 25 to 100 feet wide. Yeah. Um, our pro responsibility with that was to keep the trail up, not let it fall into disrepair, um, to keep fences in some cases intact there, and in some cases we replaced fences, and to make sure everything was utilized the way it was supposed to be. The police departments always worked with us in providing patrols on the trail and park maintenance has begun to play a bigger and bigger role as the trail has grown and they keep it nice and clean. But these business owners have been fabulous to work with. They really have. I mean, that just shows their community spirit to be willing to allow those properties to be used. Because you really wouldn't have, have had the success that we've had in the trail continuing to grow if it wasn't for those businesses because you get to a certain point and you'd have to stop, right? Right, exactly. You know I mean? yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. I, and I know uh, you talked about uh, being around to see the completion of the trail. So we're almost there. Uh, give our viewers just an update on where we are now. I know we've made it over Sandy Creek and heading over Sandy River. Bridge was in place. So we're almost, almost completing the loop, right? Right. Um, the bridge design is due back, not the bridge design, I'm sorry, the boardwalk design is due back this week mm -hmm. from a contractor and then we'll be ordering a bridge and putting in a bridge and boardwalk over Sandy River. Yeah. So that gets us all the way up to Commerce Street and then um, from Community Development and Public Works, they're working with another grant again from VDOT and coming down to meet that same point. So I would say, oh, I hate to put years on yeah. it because I'm always so optimistic, yeah. but I'd say within a year or two, we'll have that whole connection completed. The money's already in place. We already have the grant funding. It's just working through the process with getting permits and that type of thing yeah. and getting the construction done. So literally you could uh, park, let's just, uh, this is just an example, at the movie theater. And you could take the trail from behind the movie theater and go all the way down to the Institute for Advanced Learning and Research and come back down through, go back down by Angler's Park, 
head all the way back downstream, past Dan Daniel Park, past the crossing at the Dan, make the loop all the way back around to where we are here at Blue Park. And if you want to keep going, you connect right back across the, the bridge to the movie theater. I couldn't have said it better. Except yeah. I probably would have started you here, so yeah. you'd be on public parking. <laughs> yeah, that's why, yeah, I, I knew that wasn't a place to park there to move there, but that was just an example. But, yeah, so that, that is, that's the complete loop. And that'll be how many miles? Mm. Well, if you add in the roadway here, it's probably going to be about 14 miles. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's yeah. great. So are you going to be the first one to do that loop? Will you come back and say, can I, can I be the first one to make that loop? <laughs> you <laughs> hey, deserve it. <laughs> there are people out there that when we're building trail and we have the signs up saying, you know, trail under construction, they're going by saying, we're really enjoying this. You yeah. know, this is great. So I don't think I would have a chance this at getting to be the first, first person. One, yeah. yeah. But um, we're just glad so many people are enjoying it and taking, yeah. you know, taking advantage of what's here now. Yeah, that's great. Well, you, you talked about it in the final uh, years of your career here at Park and recreation how your job title has really shifted being more administrative working with the grants and things and less in programming um, are there any special projects that you've worked on say in the last five years uh, besides of course the Riverwalk Trail that, that you're particularly proud of well um, the more recent I guess um, our focus recently has been on building the trails and parks into something that's even you know, more attractive. And that's really been something that Bill Screen, our director, has kind of encouraged. Yeah. So we've gotten to work together on the Union Street Overlook, yeah. which is really pretty. Mm -hmm. And um, then also at Angler's Park, you know, you can see the new area there where we have the shade structure. Yeah. That's, that's a very attractive setting. And then, of course, we just started the art trail. Yeah. So um, that was wonderful to be able to introduce the public art and the public yeah. sculpture to Danville. It was really great to be a part of that project. And, and it seems like the public has really embraced the art trail as well because I've seen people walking around to the different pieces of artwork with their maps like they're they're following the trail and really enjoying it. Yeah I think so too. We're getting ready to put the little plaques on it to have a QR mm -hmm. code and yeah. that QR code will take them directly to the website. We also have a new program. It's like the I River Walk. You can go to our website and put your photos on it. It's IDAT for Danville Art Trail IDAT. Right. And you can put pictures of yourself there cool. that you've taken around the art. Yeah, I love that. The, the slideshows on the on the uh, website now, the Riverwalk Trail, the I Riverwalk, is really great to see everybody in the community enjoying it and uh, and capturing those special moments along the Riverwalk Trail. Because I know we have nature photographers that have showcased their work. You can see them on the wall here in the Nature Center. You got great photography, and I know in the Register and B, the uh, Mr. Hoffman highlights his work quite a bit on the Riverwalk Trail. So. Um, it's great to see um, nature in its finest uh, form there on the Riverwalk Trail. Well, Karen, as you wrap up your time here uh, within Parks and Recreation, is there one, th one thing or two things that you'll miss when you, uh, when you, that first day when the alarm clock goes off and you don't have to come to work here? Uh, what, is there one or two things you'll miss or is there something you'll miss the most about coming to Danville Parks and Recreation? Well, I think I'm, the main thing I would think is, oh my goodness, all this stuff I didn't get finished before I left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, oh, well, I think the opportunity to serve the public. I yeah. really do look at that as, as just a blessing to be able to serve and yeah. just a tremendous opportunity to be involved with all these things. It has been great. There are so many people working to constantly to improve the community from every aspect, both our public and you know, private citizens, so many folks together on this. And I just really think that Danville's gonna continue to grow. It will be, it has been nice to be a part of that. Um, so I'll probably miss that a little bit. Yeah. Um, but there's so many things to do. And you know, Mark, something we didn't mention, the Southern, you did briefly, but the Southern Virginia Mountain Bike Association yeah, and the right trails the there. Yeah. We have thought about, my husband and I have thought about if we wanted to relocate, and we keep saying, but we walk the mountain bike trails almost right every there. day, and where do you have a community that that's just eight yeah. minutes from your house? Wow. So all that they've done with that 30 miles of trail has been fabulous and brought so many people into Danville to sure. see what else we have to offer. But those trails are wonderful. It makes it like a whole different place where you can just escape. For sure. Mm -hmm. Well, Karen, um, I really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. I want to thank you for all your hard work over the last 34 years within Parks and Recreation and always your willingness to come on River City TV and tell the public about all the great things that are going on. And I know uh, department directors and division directors have your number on speed dial because I'm sure they'll be calling you up here in the, in the next few months, uh, especially when those grant cycles come through for the next part of the trail. But uh, we'll definitely miss you here at Parks and Rec, but want to thank you for all the work you've done. And uh, I'm sure um, our 
citizens will see you out, you and your husband out on the trails enjoying the great things that uh, Danville has to offer because you're not going anywhere, right? Not too far. <laughs> yeah, right. You, you'll be around. But, uh, Karen, again, thank you so much, and congratulations on your retirement. Well, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to the adventure. Yeah, sounds good. And uh, thank you at home for watching. Until next week, have a great day.